Phase change unit lesson 1.6, modeling the molecular scale. In this lesson, we communicate our explanations about what happens at the molecular scale involving scale, proportion, and quantity when a substance changes phase. So the step-by-step -step, uh, plan for this lesson is completing the warm-up and handing that in. Then you're going to create a dance to model molecular movement for each of the three phases. So those of you that are TikTok fans, maybe you can post your molecular model movement for others. In step three, uh, you have collaborative writing about videos. That might be a challenge since you are flying solo, but if you have a way to communicate with others, uh, you could collaboratively write. You could share a document and then copy and paste it in, do something creative like that. In step four, you're going to go back to a modeling tool to show how methane molecules move in different phases. You've been working with water, now we're going to model with methane. In step five, you write an explanation of the modeling tool, in other words, explaining what it is that you were able to accomplish. And then there's a little short self-assessment at the end to see how you're doing. The unit question is still, how can the appearance of a substance change without it becoming a different substance? And in this chapter, the investigation question has been, what happens to the molecules of a substance when it changes phase? So you're going to want to keep that in mind as you work through each of the steps. So now let's take a look at Lesson 1.6 and Amplify. We always start with a lesson brief, and I always want to remind you that the digital resources are available for you, uh, all the projections that you refer to and that we'll refer to in the video, uh, and then the previous videos uh, that you might need to refer to in this lesson are available to you. Then we're going to head over to the warm-up. And as always with the warm-up, you are presented with a scenario or some information, and you are going to respond in the three boxes and they are dance ideas so if you need to take a moment and uh, be creative refer to your TikTok dances contact some other kids and talk about it but this is where you're going to brainstorm for step two in step two you're being asked to create a freedom of movement dance in other words your dance motions are going to replicate what you think are happening with the molecules before we do that, they want you to take a look at three of the projection screens. First one is molecular scale freedom of movement to remind yourself what the molecules are doing at each of the three phases. So are they moving in one place? Uh, can they move around each other? Or can they move further apart? And you need to think about that when you design your dances. Key concepts they want you to remember, a phase change is when the molecules that make up a substance experience a change to their freedom of movement. This phase change involves a macro scale change in appearance. The second key concept about scale, a change that can be observed at the macro scale can be explained by a change at the molecular scale, which cannot be observed with the naked eye. So take some time, uh, design your dance. Uh, if you're Willing to share it, you might find some social media to share it out with your classmates uh, before moving on to step three. In step three, you're asked to do some collaborative writing. Uh, there are four videos, and if we were in the classroom, what you would end up doing is picking one of those videos to watch and then writing about the video you watched and then sharing that with others. And you'd have a student that watched each different video contribute to the writing so you had a whole response when you're finished. That's going to be a little challenging for you now. Uh, you could decide to do just one of the videos. Uh, you could decide to do all four videos on your own. Or you could decide to do a video and then contact other students uh, through some sort of uh, Google Drive app, phone, email, and then share uh, answers that way. But one thing we want to look at in this is the present, uh, presentation screen about an example explanation. So as you're writing in there and you're using the word bank to help you uh, come up with an explanation, uh, when the water in the cup evaporated, the phase changed from liquid to gas. In this case, the molecules experience greater freedom of movement. In the, in the liquid phase, the molecules move freely around each other but stayed in contact on the gas phase, the molecules moved away from each other. So here's an example explanation uh, from one of the videos, that you, and you can try to model your answer uh, after something similar to this. When you complete 
either your portion or you're able to collaborate with others and bring their portions in, uh, hand that in before moving on to step four. Before describing step four, I want to remind you that you can access articles and videos that they've described in these steps back in the lesson brief. So if you're wondering where you might need to find some of these things, always remember you've got the lesson brief to refer to. So in step four, uh, you're going to model methane lake freezing and methane lake evaporating. Uh, these were the two original claims about what was going on on Titan. So I'm going to open up that presentation, uh, that projection, and take a look. So the lake froze, so it was solid methane uh, compared to the solid surface of Titan. And then the probe uh, claim two would be that the lake evaporated uh, and you would see both solid surfaces of Titan. This had to do with that black dot that was outlined that kind of turned white back when they first introduced it to us. Um, they also want us to take a look at a message from Dr. Flores. You've learned a lot about phase change since you began your work. Now it's time to use what you've learned to determine what happened to the methane-rich lake on Titan. As you recall, the most probable claim suggested the lake changed phase and either evaporated or froze. This time, there's not enough evidence to determine which of the two phase changes occurred. Please use the modeling tool to model both evaporation and freezing. This will give our team a better sense of what to look for as we continue our mission. So the fact that you're going to model this, it's going to be used by other scientists to explore um, the data that comes back from the uh, Titan mission. So let's head over to the model and take a look. Uh, so here we're given liquid to solid. Notice in the top uh, it says that the lake froze. So if you can't tell which model you're in, uh, you can kind of tell by the description at the top and the fact that liquid going to a solid is freezing. In the instructions, uh, just on how to use the model, you can click on the eye up in the upper left and, and it'll tell you how to manipulate the model. But in the instructions in Amplify, it says click on that pencil. They already give you that it's a liquid phase. Your job is to pick which of these molecule boxes it might match up with and whether uh, its appearance fits any of these boxes. Uh, please don't go by the boxes I'm selecting. I'm just randomly selecting them to give you the opportunity to figure out what you think is going on. Then you close that, and then you come over to the second one, and you do the same with the second one. And when you're finished with that, you hand that in. By clicking that hand in button, what it does is put your image down here below. And then you're going to move over to the next step. In step two, you're doing the same thing, only you're working with the methane lake evaporating model. So your phases are going to be different. The model is going to look the same. You're going to pick molecule movement boxes, descriptors, hand that in, and you know you've done it correctly when you see your image down here below. Then you're going to come down in the bottom right corner and hand that in to finish step four. In step five, you're given the opportunity to explain what it is that you created in the model. So they do give you a link back to your two model versions, the freezing and the evaporating. Uh, or you can go back to st uh, step four and refer to them there. Give you a word bank, encouraging you to use the word solid liquid gas, macro scale, molecular scale, and freedom of movement. Uh, but uh, to thoroughly understand what you understand, uh, we need to communicate in writing what it is we think we understand. So here you go, explaining what happened so far with your model and then handing that in once you're comfortable with your explanation. In step six, we arrive at another self-assessment uh, where they're asking you whether or not you feel that you understand what's going on with each of the topics. So there's a few questions there, uh, three of them to be, four of them, five of them, six of them. Wow, big self-assessment. Six questions for you to respond to based on uh, how comfortable you are with your knowledge. And then that finishes up not only 1.6, but chapter 1.